It's going to be the 4th of July next weekend. And America is ready for the summer. America is so ready for the summer, it doesn't matter that 50 million people are unemployed. It doesn't matter that millions of businesses are closing. It doesn't matter if the stock market is doing double monkey backflips. It don't matter because it's summertime, baby. So what if you don't have a job? So what if you, have, you can't pay your rent? You got to go to the beach. You got to fire up the grill. Put some meat on the barbecue. This is, America has forgotten about COVID-19. Distant memory, just a distant memory, it don't exist. And what is finding out, and this is something I predicted a long, long time ago, that for a certain segment of America to understand, to believe COVID-19 is real, they're gonna have to get sick and almost die. Until that happens, it ain't real. I've got people on Facebook who just, it ain't real, it ain't real. So what if the state of New York has literally shut down and literally had refrigerator trucks with body, that don't mean that. it ain't real. Unless I can test with my hands, if I can conduct the test and validate the test, it ain't real. And this is why, like literally, the Civil War in America, this thing with mask has become crazy. You go around the world, you see people in China and Thailand wearing masks, not a problem. In America, you see the dude going after the Walmart greeter like, hey, you ain't gonna make me wear no mask. You're not going to violate my constitutional rights. No, sir, not today. I'm an American. I'm going to do what I want. If I want to get this coronavirus, I'm going to get it, baby. You know, it's funny. Right now, we are at a critical juncture with this pandemic because the state of Utah is thinking about shutting down. And I keep getting people who accuse me of fear mongering for reporting the truth. All I'm doing is relaying things that are facts, not made up stuff that you could go to the Google machine and fact, fact check me. And you know what? I've come to this conclusion that we have a segment of the population that is weak. Yep, weak, soft as wet toilet tissue because any mention of the truth, no, no, we don't want to hear this. And I, I've seen it on, on the YouTubes that people are like, you know, finally some good news. I'm sick and tired of hearing bad news. Folks, it's only been three months. I want you to think what your great grandparents went through for 10 years. Food lines, high unemployment, business closures, slow economy. They went through that for 10 years. We're here at three months and people are committing suicide. And I don't mean to make light of that. There's nothing to make jokes about. I'm not going to do that. But we got three months and people committing suicide. See, the great American experiment has been one of extravagance. No other country in the world do other poor people, aside from the homeless, live like our poor people. In other countries and around the world, you know, being poor is having no clean drinking water, not staying in bed sty, not staying in a heated apartment with running water, refrigerator, and cable. You know, and also with the, the grilling and chilling of America, one of the things I think is going to come out of this pandemic is that people are about to become tougher out of necessity. You know, the other day I did a video talking about van life and people was like it was played. I found a video that was done 
three days ago about a couple that bought a van that's almost got a million views. I don't think van life has played. And many, many people are right now in the decision-making process. Do they give up their apartment and do they buy a van? There are many people having that conversation amongst themselves and with their significant other. Only people who are not having these conversations are people with small children. Van life and small children don't really work. Now, if you want to get on the sailboat, there's a couple sailing Lavanda Bong or something like that, where they have their little kid on the sailboat, but the sailboat is much bigger than the van. It's almost the size of a studio apartment, or I think it may even be bigger than that. I remember one time I went on the yacht and it was luxurious. It was like, whoa, this is what rich folks do? I want to be rich. This is nice. But we are about to go through a transmission where America's about to get tougher. America's about to get stronger out of necessity. Because like I said, I got you few, you few people who are talking about fear mongering. You're giving me your opinion. You ain't putting no facts down. Why would me saying that 50 million people being unemployed, millions of businesses are closed, millions of businesses are filing for bankruptcy, and the GDP is 40%. Why is that fear mongering? Cause you weak, you weak. You, you 40 some years old and you still believe you believe in Santa Claus and the Easter bunny because if your mom and dad told you the truth, you flip out like what? What do you mean there ain't no Santa Claus? What? I'm 42 years old. For 42 years low, I've been believing a lie? And then you will go through a period of deep, dark self-examination because there ain't no Santa Claus. It's like, saying ain't so. It, it ain't saying ain't so. But this is summer is going to be a really pivotal summer because the whole month of June, each week for unemployment filings have been 1.5 million. So for you V-shaped recovery people, I have a question for you. If we're going to have a V-shaped recovery, when is the economy going to stop melting down? When is unemployment filings going to be radically reduced? Put that in the comments for, you know, don't tell me because your cousin Ed has an ice cream truck and Ed has been selling ice cream during the summer like crazy. I, I'm starting to see evidence of a V-shaped recovery in my neighborhood because Ed is selling ice cream. But Pier One, Microsoft, all these businesses are closing, but because your brother Ed has an ice cream truck and he's selling more ice cream than other than ever that that's the sign of a v-shaped recovery really really bro come at me better come at me with some really overall statistical data come at me like the fact that rents went down across america from los angeles to north carolina rents have gone down new york rents have gone down and that's a hard hard thing to do because, you know, landlords don't like to come down on rents. They rather give you free rent. They don't want to come down on rents. But you know why they're coming down on rents? Because some money's better than no money. See, my analysis and the things I bring to you come from the perspective of a business owner. When the cash stops, scary moment. Scary moment. You rather have a little cash flow than no cash flow. So, you know, you can live to fight another day. And I'm getting the opinions of all this fear mongering stuff from people who never had a business. People who are never out here killing dragons. People who have never, ever had to make a payroll. I'm going to tell you a little story. It was one time I had to make payroll on Friday. And it was Monday. And I was freaking out 
because I did not have the pay on Monday for these folks payroll checks Friday. So what did I do? Did I go around and like, hey guys, you're not getting paid Friday? Mm -mm. I spent many hours posting content on Craigslist, doing whatever I needed to do, talking to the banks. I exhausted every possibility before I went to my employees and like, hey, y'all ain't getting paid Friday. And you know what? Thursday, that, you know, this, I knew this on Monday, but on Thursday, I secured enough money to make payroll for four weeks. That's the life of a business owner. You make magic when there ain't nothing going on. You turn pinto beans to filet mignon steak. See, when you're a business owner, you have the ability to create and produce magic to transform certain situations. So for all of you folks with your V-shaped recovery and your fear mongering talk, start a business and then talk to me because your opinion ain't valid up in these parts, partner. Cause you just talking out your ass. You just making assumptions. Cause see, here we are. We are moving toward the end of June. And like I said, next week's gonna be the 4th of July and the clock starts ticking. As some people put in the comments, the unemployment, the additional unemployment benefits gonna run out like July 25th, not the 31st. So it's gonna be sooner. And then will unemployment rates continue to skyrocket for the month of June? That's the question that we don't have the answer to yet because it ain't June. But for us to have a DJ recovery, that's got to stop. That's got to slow way down. We cannot be having 1.5 million people a week filing for unemployment. Also, the unemployment insurance system wasn't built for this type of drama. Many states are already starting to run out of money. And this combined with the number of people who have been laid off for weeks or in some cases months who have not been able to secure unemployment benefits. Plus the onslaught of new people applying for unemployment benefits. V-shaped recovery people, holla at me. Let me know when that's going to stop because see, as that Drake songs, we started at the bottom. Now we're here. We're not at the bottom yet. The rate of descent has slowed down, but we still going down. So when we going to hit the bottom, like I predicted, I told you guys the stock market was going to crash again. Told you guys, you know, for all you folks who's like, hey, man, I'm missing my opportunity, fear of missing out. Oh, if I don't buy some stocks, I don't get the stock. I'm missing my what? No, you ain't missing nothing. It's the end of June. We got six more months left in this year. I predict the stock market's going to crash big two to three more times this year. You want to know why? Let me go ahead and give you something called real economic data. Right now, our boy Donnie, Donald Trump, has like done an about face about that second stimulus check. Like, oh, we're going to cut him a second stimulus check. And when did he do that? After he looked at his dreadful poll numbers and after he looked at the piss poor attendance of his rally. That's when they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I need to do something fast. Like the last time when I sent out a check with my name on the check, that was a good move. I need to do something like that. I need to pull some magic out my butt, get these people a check, but I need to do it. Where it's in that 90 day window so I can talk about it and I can run ads and I can brag about it so I can get reelected. Right now, who knows who's going to be president? I'm not even going to try to call it because we are too far out. I will start paying attention to these polls two weeks before election day because we've got a lot of stuff to happen, a lot of stuff to go down, a lot of stuff 
we've got to reconcile. We have so much that's got to drop that's going to come out of the economy. So, you know, Donald could get reelected. I know that sounds crazy with the bad economy, but everyone understands the pandemic is not his fault. You can't blame this on the Donald. He didn't see it coming. He mishandled it. And with that, the state of Utah is thinking about closing down. The state of Texas, big, bold Texas. Hey, there ain't no Rona. We Texans, we gonna do what we want. Texan is slowing down this opening pl plans. So, like I said, Texas is going to be a dumpster fire before all this is over because once again, I'm a Texan. I got my cowboy boots on. You will tell me what to do, boy. I'm going to go out here and fire up this grill. I'm going to invite some friends over and we're going to have a party, Texas style. And then, you know, when 18 people go to a party and they all test positive for the coronavirus and then all the elderly people went to the, the party or now in the hospital, that's got to happen over and over and over and over and over. Because see, this is one of the things and I see it on my Facebook page all the time. Do you know anyone with the coronavirus? And once again, half the country believes it's real. Half the country believes it's a hoax. The greatest hoax pulled on America. And until more people get sick, because, you know, it's at the point where it's like, prove it to me. I ain't sick. I don't know anyone that's sick. My mama don't know anyone that's sick. Prove it to me. Because until you prove it to me, it ain't real. This is just a horrible, horrible, bad joke. We shut down the country for nothing. Now, Kumo, governor of New York, is like, clap back. He's like, all of you Republican governors who thought this was a hoax, you thought we were doing too much, ha ha. Because we have 21 or 22 states where the Rona is running rampant, is running rampant through Florida, is running rampant through Texas. I don't, you know, it's starting to amp up here in Georgia, which, you know, I think this is a text. I don't think we're doing a lot of testing in Georgia because the behavior of Georgians and Texas is pretty much similar. They, they're doing what they're doing. But here is your economic analysis. If you have a six figure job and no one's sweating you about your productivity, uh, you need to be worried. If no one's checking in on you, you need to be worried because you're going to get that call like from Hubert Resources. Hey, Carl, let me talk to you today. 10 o'clock. Carl, we've decided to do some restructuring and you're not part of the restructuring. Here's your benefit package. We want your badge. We want the equipment back. See you later. Have a nice life. I feel that the unemployment will continue through July at the current pace that is in because see the first rounds of Rona unemployment was because of the Rona. Now business is like, oh man, we can do better. We don't need y'all. We can make this money without y'all. So bye bye. See you later. And this is going to continue through the end of the year. It, it, it is because, um, you know, it, like I said, it's grilling and chilling. There are so many people who are more preoccupied about having fun than they are about survival. And at some point, once it becomes real, at that point, that's when behavior changes. Not a minute before. It's not going to change before. And also, I have to go ahead and admit something that I've done some more research and that marriage has increased for older folks, but the overall rate of marriage has decreased. I have a feeling that as this economy melts down and men and women are going to need each other, because see, this is one of the reasons that marriage has gone down. Women don't need men financially. 
They like financial men, they like rich men, but they really don't need men because they can go out and get their own money. Except this recession has hit more women than ever. Normally recessions hit men, they're man sessions. This one, it's going ahead and it's hitting Big Booty Betty, Sexy Slim Susan, Curvaceous Candy. They're finding themselves on a, with an OnlyFans account. Um, this is something someone sent me. The number of women who are 40 something to 60 something who are appearing on sugar baby websites in OnlyFans and Chatterbait has jumped through the roof. Cause honey needs some money. And that's the only thing she got left she could sell. So I feel that at some point marriage will come back in vogue because people need each other. Now cohabitation and hobosexualization is through the roof. The hobosexuals are doing double monkey backflips all over these chicks. You got this dude, Tyrone, Tyrone 6'2", lives in the gym, got a six pack, and he sees Curvaceous Candy, who's bigger than Curvaceous, you know, Curvaceous Candy's like 5'2", 250 pounds, and he, but she kind of cute. Tyrone like, hey Candy, what's up? Candy like, hi Tyrone, and she see Tyrone 6'2", with the six pack, the square jaw. Candy likes a little Tyrone, and Candy understands the game. She's like, cause Candy, Candy's a smart cookie. Candy got some money. Candy lives in a house by herself. Tyrone knows this. Tyrone is a hobosexual. Tyrone like, hey, let's go out. Okay. Candy and Tyrone go out. First night, Tyrone gives her the D. And candy sprung. See, women can get sprung on the D just like men can get sprung on the P. Just depends upon the situation and time. And next thing you know, Tyrone has moved his duffel bag in and his pit bull is in the garage. And Tyrone is homosexual with candy. You're going to see this all over America. Hobosexuals. Sugar mamas, old women on holy fans with their wrinkled up nipples, like, ah, look at it, look at it, it's still suckable. The state of America, man. The state of America. So, what can you do? Well, one of the things you can do is to get your finances together. What I'm doing is offering for a thousand bucks three consulting calls to walk you through your financial blueprint. So this is part of Savage Finance and Ultimate Money should be ready next week or the beta version of it should be next week. I'll put links below. Ultimate Money will be a graduation of the money management course because there's so many things I'm going to put into this as well as the stuff with the money management course plus a better pathway and I'm using Kajabi versus think of it because they have a better outlay it better outline so look for that because you got to get your money together I know on this channel I tell you the real but see there's opportunity for those who are prepared if you ain't prepared this opportunity don't exist but if you're prepared there is so much opportunity that's going to be coming for the folks who have good credit, who have money in the bank, more so money in the bank, and who have the hustler's mindset. There's some good stuff that's coming. It's coming, folks. It's coming. So that's all I got for you today. Be sure to watch this video right here.